Hello and welcome to Avoiding Big Brother. I'm starting a new playlist on the channel around the topic of how to disappear. This is basically taking privacy to the extreme. The methods I will talk about here for those that are in a certain situation where privacy must be at a high level. Perhaps they are vulnerable to government monitoring or someone is looking for them and they want to stay hidden. In this first video I talk about mailboxes and separating your name from your address. So how do you go about this? The first thing that you'll have to do is move to a new address. If you have been using your current name at your address then it is already too late. You have left a trail for somebody to find you. If you are renting then this is going to be easy. You find somewhere else quickly without any ties. If you own your home then you have to make the big decision of whether to sell up and buy another home and start from scratch. This will come down to how crucial privacy is for you. What you have to do once you have moved into a fresh new place of residence is stop sending and receiving mail in your own name. For the remainder of this video I will cover using aliases on the address of your home, setting up a PO box, using a commercial mailbox agency. For each of these methods I will discuss what you can and can't do with them and suggestions for what kind of mail you can send or receive. So the first step to take will give you a very basic level of privacy using an alias as your name on the mail address. This is ideal for memberships, hobbies and magazine subscriptions. You could also use the alias for any anonymous credit cards and debit cards and the statements that you would receive for those accounts. You can at least stop a lot of that sort of mail from being posted in your name to your home. Using an alias is not breaking the law for any post that is not connected with your government. I would also recommend not registering for voting, particularly if you live in the UK. Registering for the electoral roll will give your name away to the government and public information databases that use government data. 192.com would be an example. The best way to go about it is to use a gender neutral alias like Alex or Blake for example. For official documents like bank statements and business letters then it would be best to use a mailbox and we'll go through the options next. Okay, so the first option we're going to look at is setting up a PO box and in the UK you can use our National Postal Service, Royal Mail, to set one of those up. And if you live in another country, you'll have your own National Postal Service and they will probably provide this service as well, a PO box service. And they're quite easy to set up. And as you can see, it can be used for separating your home address, and especially if you've got a business and you want to keep that home address separate. It's also good for preventing mail theft, especially if you're in like shared accommodation. You know, if you live in a HMO and you're getting shared mail coming through, it's, it's an excellent service for that to keep your mail from going to that home address and, and going to the PO box instead. Um, you've got different options to set this up. You can have it so that you go and collect the, the post from a delivery office. And you can also set it up where it's actually forwarded and delivered to your home address at an extra cost and you can pay for that monthly or over a six month period or 12 month period which would work out cheaper. So that's quite easy to set up. Um, the only downside with PO boxes is you're going to have to provide identification. Um, you can go for a mail, a commercial mail address, uh, a commercial agency like mailboxes etc. Again, they will require identification as well, so it won't be top privacy, but with this you can get a street address rather than a P.O. box address. Um, so this is another option. Uh, they can also provide virtual office services as well. Um, but with a commercial agency, there's more chance of your name coming up in national databases through that registration. <clears throat> As an alternative, you could go for a smaller operation for a, a mailbox service, um, a smaller company. They probably only provide one address that you would uh, take your mail for to. Um, here is an example. This is just a suggestion. It's not a recommendation, but it's one that I've found called Ghost Mail. And these might actually be a ghost mail service as well, uh, a ghost address. And I'll be doing more on that in another video. Uh, but Definitely at the moment, as I see it, they are a commercial mailbox agency. Through further research, I will check and see if you could actually set this up as a ghost address 
without using your own identification. But certainly it's going to be useful for mail forwarding and that would be the service I'd be interested in. It's got lots of other services for like setting up companies and that sort of thing, businesses. But the mail, main thing for it is the, the mail forwarding. And you can set that up uh, as paying uh, monthly. You can pay for it over 12 months, which again works out a lot cheaper. And again, that gives you like a street address. I think they only have one street address for this because it's not a big commercial company. But I think they'd have a greater level of privacy. Because there's less chance of your name appearing on na national databases with a service like this with a small company. It's for businesses and individuals. Um, and one thing that, that shows up on here, which is quite important uh, in the FAQ, uh, is along the lines of, of actually using it to send your driving license or your vehicle re registration. Vehicle registration can be part bypassed easily because you could set up a limited liability corporation. I'll do another video on that. Driving license is always going to be tricky because there are fines. If you don't give the, the true address or if you're going to change the address or you fail to notify you're going to change the address, um, there are fines. And here it's noting it's a £1,000 fine. And that is a tricky thing here. This is where you might need a ghost address and someone that's going to turn a blind eye to the fact that your driving license will go to that address. You would actually be doing something illegal there. So that's something to consider. I'd like uh, any any comments below would be appreciated on on what you could do about the driving license, but it would certainly be good for uh, other things like uh, bank statements, utility statements, um, doctor registration, memberships, personal mail to friends and family, all that sort of thing.